Hello, uh, welcome to the session. We'll be talking about building the future of time series data using Cosmos database. Um, I am Mandana. I'm a principal in the modernization practice of Infosys. The modernization practice in Infosys is structured as a horizontal working with vertical line of businesses. This gives us a unique vantage point to work with various enterprise customer problems across the verticals. Today, we'll talk about one such customer journey. The agenda for today is to talk about the introduction to the use case, how Cosmos database uh, supported us for this particular use case. We'll get into the details of the data model and the design. We'll also talk about the challenges and optimizations uh, with the design and overall usage. We'll talk about the outcomes and the key considerations um, that we had in this implementation. Uh, to introduce you to the use case, um, we have used Cosmos database with Cassandra API as a storage solution for uh, a time series, um, as a time series database for one of the largest IoT product implementations. In a typical uh, IoT implementation, you would have what you call as an edge area, which largely deals with the IoT edge gateways, the sensors, which are all connected and largely deployed on the field. And then you have the cloud area where you know the data from these uh, edge devices are consumed and processed and stored. And then you have the app section where the data which is stored is further taken and processed to make certain decisions uh, and draw out uh, uh, implementations. Right. So that's, now we'll talk about three. Um, we'll talk about the scale, the query patterns, and the key requirements that we had for this product. Right. From a scale perspective, we had over 5,000 odd um, IoT edge devices that were planned to be deployed um, across the globe. Uh, and each of these edge devices were further connected to, say, three to a uh, you know, bunch of um, sensors. And then each IoT device would further, um, the idea was to, uh, each IoT device would further transmit you the data, and overall scale was expected to be around having around you know uh, 2 million odd observations per minute at any point of time during its peak performance. That was kind of the scale that we were looking at. Um, from a query patterns perspective, we were largely a, a, a write heavy product. Uh, we had most of our use case was about, you know, uh, ingesting a lot of data and the reads were very minimal. Um, and more, for each of the queries, you would always have the tenant tenant ID, the sensor, and the observation details handy. And uh, most of the uh, use cases were also around, you know, pre querying the recent set of data and not really uh, too much of a history. From a storage re re perspective, the key requirements was to have a, a managed distributed database, which was globally available. Uh, we wanted and consider, considering this is IoT data, we wanted it to be a time series data, you know, with something which supports time series data, which is scalable and potentially um, which can support cross-platform as well. We had use cases where, you know, we could potentially scale the product into multiple cloud providers and also you could take it to on-premises if need be. So a database that we wanted should should consume and consider all these all these scenarios and should support these scenarios. Now we chose Cosmos database. Um, we'll talk about why we chose it and uh, what made it very special for us. Um, Cosmos database uh, has various APIs. Uh, it has Gremlin, SQL, Cassandra, and others. And Cosmos, uh, being a cloud native database, uh, it is it is a fully managed database. It is Microsoft takes care of the underlying infrastructure and maintenance, ensuring that the consumer has zero operations overhead. Cosmos database is also one of one of the key services which is available across most of the regions uh, wherever Azure is deployed, ensuring that you have a global presence. Uh, building an application and consuming Cosmos database with Cassandra API ensures that the uh, underlying storage and the um, associated uh, you know custom application um, is portable, right? Meaning if you go ahead and set up a new Cassandra cluster in another cloud provider or in any location, you can still, you know, the product would work seamlessly because the underlying implementation with the storage is exactly the same, except for the connection strings, of course. Uh, we, if we can, 
Cosmos database can also provides you with an unique option of multi-tenancy. And uh, the co concept of request units makes it in, an ideal solution for us. I'll discuss more in detail about the multi-tenancy and the RUs in, in the further slides. In this slide, we'll talk about the uh, the overall data model and the design, um, right? Um, like I said, in an IoT solution, you have what you call as a edge area and the cloud area. If you look at the top section, uh, you know there are sensors, and these sensors are connected to IoT edge devices, which further you know pushes the data into IoT hub. And for, from the IoT hub, we have a bunch of you know uh, microservices or any sort of compute which can process the data and finally push the data into the storage, right? In our case, Cosmos DB. So what you see in the middle section is basically the design of the Cosmos uh, Cosmos database. So within a Cosmos account, we had the key space, and uh, within a key space, what you have as a you know a Cosmos table is what I've termed as tenant. So every ten, you know, uh, within a tenant, we were capturing the sensor IDs, the observation name, and the timestamp. A combination of these three would be the primary key. The timestamp itself was the cluster key. The idea was, you know, uh, when you put the when you put the timestamp as a cluster key, uh, you you would cluster all the data from a particular timestamp together. And also ensuring that the cluster key is ordered in a descending uh, order, ensuring that you know the latest data is always on the top. So um, the same table structure was repeated for each tenant, ensuring that you know uh, you you could con you could segregate your customers' data into various tables. And uh, Cosmos, like I said, Cosmos gives you gives you that unique opportunity to scale at each tenant level. So uh, what you could do is you could scale and allocate IDs for each tenant independently. And that's something that I want I've represented in the bottom section, if you can see that. Uh, now, this design had one drawback, though. Um, so the primary key that I mentioned about sensor ID, the observation and timestamp, this, this meant that you know uh, at any point of time to query this data, it was a must to have the sensor ID and observation name. Now you could have scenarios where you know uh, a, a particular uh, query uh, requires you know uh, to get all the latest data from a particular sensor without necessarily passing the um, observation names. So in which case um, it becomes uh, you know we didn't we did not have an uh, optimal solution for such scenarios. To handle such scenarios, one of the one of the ideas was to uh, put these uh, or store these observation names in a um, in a persistent storage, something like an Azure table. So in case um, you need to query all the latest data from a particular sensor, you would query the, um, and when you don't have the observation names, you will query the Azure table to get hold of all the observation names, and then take that further to go back and you know uh, query the database to get all the required data. Um, the other, other um, challenge that we noticed was, uh, you know, with each tenant, there was a set of RUs that were allocated. And whether there was uh, queries fired against a tenant or not, in spite of that, there would the, there would be at least 10% of the RUs which are always allocated. And you know, no matter whether there was consumption, it was uh, getting charged, right? It was unused uh, capacity. So to handle this, uh, the idea was, you know, um, can we optimize this? How, how better can we optimize it? One of the uh, implementations that we went at was to move the RU allocation from the uh, tenant to the key space itself, meaning you allocate within a key space, you allocate uh, a certain set of RUs and whatever tenants that are available under the uh, key space, everybody would share the same set of RUs. This will ensure that if one particular tenant is not really uh, utilizing the complete capacity, um, the other tenant could really consume it, right? So that makes it, you know, um, mostly, um, you know, a well-optimized solution per se. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you about, um, uh, you know, now that we've discussed about the problem, the scale, I want to talk to you about the key outcomes and what are the considerations that we had and how you could utilize Cosmos database. 
Um, like I said, the idea was really to test, uh, test for around uh, 1.5 to 2 million records, uh, pushing into the database on a continual basis every minute, right? Um, so these message sizes varied from around 8 to 10 KBs. We wrote a customer custom um, custom ingester application, right, which could constantly pump data into the uh, application, which would process the data and further push it into the database. So each such message had around, you know, 10 to 50 um, observations, right, uh, which were constantly getting pushed. Now, um, when we tested for the scale of um, over an hour and a couple of hours, what we noticed was almost P95 sort of messages were getting stored within the database in less than 10 milliseconds. And we were getting the response in less than 10 milliseconds, which is what Cosmos promises. And uh, that's something that we noticed as well. And then there were around P99 messages were in, a, in the scale of around less than 20 milliseconds, which is usually expected. Um, so um, the RUs were allocated at a, um, at a key space level. And like I said, we, we moved into manual allocation as well. Uh, and we, we saw that there was around 140k RUs uh, were actually getting used, even though we had allocated a bit more higher, 140k RUs is what we noticed as actually getting utilized. So um, what that means is, uh, you know, um, moving the RU allocation from tenant to key space is a key thing that we need to do just to make sure that it is optimally utilized. Otherwise, the RU allocation was a bit more higher. Uh, and also scaling from manual to automated, uh, automated to manual is something that we need to consider based on the use cases. Uh, meaning if you if you are expecting in your use case, if there is going to be an unpredictable uh, flow of data, then you would want to make sure that you are in uh, automated. But in our case, it was, you know, we knew the number of tenants that are getting uh, coming in. We knew the number of devices that we are adding. So, uh, we kind of had an idea of, you know, what is the scale going to be? So we could add, uh, you know, uh, on a gradual fashion uh, scale as required. But if your, if your business mean, uh, needs you to like, uh, has an unpredictable flow, then you would probably would want to stick to automated scaling. Um, Cosmos also has, uh, you know, um, uh, allocates the RUs based on, uh, not just on the consumption, it also considers based on the underlying storage as well. Uh, what it means is if your database has, uh, you know, stored more and more data, then you would want, you know, the, alloc the amount of values that you want to allocate will be a bit more higher. So to uh, handle that, you would want to uh, have an archival strategy as well um, to, you know, probably historic data, if it is not really required, you would want to keep it in, in, in some other sort of storage. Like in our case, we went ahead and stored uh, the historic data into a, uh, blob storage uh, and you know use it as and when required so uh, cosmos really works very well for a, a time series database um, one should uh, to really reap all the benefits of cosmos database one should continuously revisit the RU allocation and find your sweet spot on what works for you right um, and uh, yeah with that i think uh, i'll wrap up my session um, yeah, thank you.